Welcome to Crypto Corner everyone, your crypto radar for all of the latest news, reviews and tutorials that help you master the cryptocurrency markets. Now today we're going to talk about Ethereum and Bitcoin because um, these are basically uh, the, the main cryptos that are driving the market. Bitcoin is really the one, but uh, there's some news about Ethereum. You know, lately there's been this proposal that is uh, scheduled for July uh, that will actually uh, start burning the Ethereum fees rather than uh, giving them to the miners. And this has been quite controversial. So a lot of miners are against it and everything. So there's, uh, you know, a heated debate around this. So there is a new proposal that I will be talking about but first we're going to look at the markets let's start with a, a quick market roundup and uh, what we are seeing today is uh, some of the coins are doing a recovery others are still struggling and bitcoin is particularly struggling with uh, breaking the uh, resistance and uh, i mean it got rejected from its uh, 60,000 level and i mean we went slightly above 60,000 very briefly and then we got a rejection so we are still now in consolidation time we're kind of moving sideways we are uh, going between 55 and 56,000 which is uh, not too bad for the altcoins this is why we are seeing some of the altcoins performing quite well today uh, XRP is one of them 7% up since yesterday also uh, we see that Stellar is up 2% uh, Dogecoin is 1% up not really much Theta is now uh, doing uh, very good uh, recovery from the drop that it experienced, 5% um, up today. And Theta just had an update on their protocols. I reported already about this in a previous episode, so you are aware of that. Uh, Crypto.com is uh, not really much, but it is 6% up in the last week. So not too bad as well. Crypto.com is also having a, a major upgrade coming. They're moving to their mainnet. Uh, they're launching their own blockchain, basically, and moving to their mainnet. So that is, and I think I forgot what was the date, but this is any day now. So. Uh, um, you can refer to my previous video actually where I gave you all of the key dates for March and you will find it there. Um, what else do we have? Um, we'll see a good performance from uh, Cosmos, Atom Cosmos, 6% up since yesterday. And uh, that's it in the in the top coins. These are the, the ones that I'm seeing uh, performing quite well. Uh, everything else is uh, kind of staling and is just waiting for Bitcoin to actually make its move. Now, uh, talking of Bitcoin, it's, uh, it's struggling and uh, it is now at the key support level. This is the support at around 56 and 55,000. Uh, now, if we fall below these support levels, I mean, it is a, a small range here. We have a lower support, which is at 50K. So let's see if we're going to be dropping down there. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised right now if we see that because there is in fact a decline in the interest in Bitcoin, not, not really in the interest, but in the buying, in the purchasing power of Bitcoin. And I actually just posted this on my blog, this article here, Bitcoin fails to break major resistance. And uh, I talked about the fact that, uh, I mean, you, you should go and read it, but if you're not the reading type, uh, then I will summarize it for you here. Basically, I'm talking about the fact that we are seeing a lot of uh, selling pressure from uh, whales, which has been reported in a few different, by a few different sources, uh, wallets with over 1000 Bitcoin codings are actually selling Bitcoin right now. So, you know, this typically we refer to this as whales. And at the same time, we are seeing a decline in the institutional purchasing in Bitcoin. So what we're seeing is that uh, so far in this quarter, in the first quarter of this year, we, we've seen 173,000 Bitcoin being purchased by institutional investors. And uh, compared to last quarter of last year, 307,000 Bitcoin. So it is... Uh, not half, but uh, just slightly more than half of what was purchased in the last quarter of last year. So, you know, this is quite a decline. This is around uh, more than 40% less uh, 
uh, also uh, retail investors are uh, also purchasing slightly less um, last quarter of last year it was uh, 205,000 this uh, year first quarter 187,000 Bitcoin so we are seeing a, a kind of a, a pretty much the same amounts purchased by retail investors and institutional investors uh, but at the same time both of these figures for the first quarter of this year are lower than the last quarter so this is important to note and uh, as we see more selling pressure from wells and less buying pressure of course prices are failing to uh, continue to go up we see that institutional investors are pretty much the same microstrategy square grayscale we had tesla this year you know that was uh, unusual and it was a different one but the rest of them are the same institutional investors and um we are not really seeing anyone else big coming into the game besides Tesla. So what I'm expecting is that it would really just take one big institutional investor to come and, and purchase a huge amount of Bitcoin that will make the headlines and we will be on the run again. I mean, on the run up again. So um, as, you, as you know, uh, my target for Bitcoin is in fact uh, the first one of course is 60k we managed to reach it and we broke above it but that was very brief so it this still remains our key resistance level once we break that my next target is 68 and then I have a target of 73,000 so these are the key levels that I'm looking for once we start uh, you know the next leg up in terms of support I'm looking at the 55 where we are currently we I hope we don't break this support level uh, I mean it is a range between 54 and 55 this one here the green one and then we have a lower support of 50,000 and even lower support at 45,000 so these are support levels that have to hold us I I really hope that we don't break these support levels because that would mean a prolonged bear um, I mean short-term bear face not a bear market necessarily but a bear face so um, these are the key price levels now let's go into Ethereum and um, and talk about this proposal because this was quite a controversial proposal I reported on it in my previous videos you know about it it's called EIP 55 uh, what was it 50 uh, 1559 so um, EIP stands for Ethereum improvement proposal the same as with Bitcoin BIP Bitcoin improvement proposal every time there is a new um, improvement or something that you know a type of an upgrade or something that needs to be implemented in the protocol of these cryptocurrencies because they're decentralized these are coming usually in the form of proposals then proposals have to be agreed upon they have to be voted by the community and the, you know miners and developers and everything but with Ethereum it seems that it is more uh, de developer driven than miners are driven right so um, miners are against this proposal because it is about removing the fees uh, not removing but uh, delegating the fees uh, instead of being uh, given to the miners to be actually burnt and making in a way making ethereum a deflationary token however there is a new proposal now the coin telegraph is reporting on it it says that um, in recent weeks Tensions have escalated over ERP 1559, an upgrade slated for integration in July that is expected to discipline Ethereum's volatile fee market while significantly impacting minor revenues. And if you remember, in my video, I also quoted some figures from the latest statistics. So back in February, throughout February, minor revenue from fees alone was over $700 million worth and uh, the overall minor revenue was uh, 1.3 million dollars but 700,000 so more than half a million was purely from the fees so uh, of course miners were not happy about this proposal and it is uh, scheduled for July so it is I mean it's already been approved by developers not by the miners so it doesn't that proposal doesn't really have an uh, a, a, an overall consensus anyway so the new proposal is uh, called EIP 3368 and uh, if approved it would actually raise the block reward to three ether and then lower it 
to one other over the next two years as the Ethereum 2.0 comes into effect and they switch from proof of work to proof of stake. So this is the proposal. Now, um, this, of course, is not really welcomed by all of the community because uh, for a moment, we thought that Ethereum is going to become a deflationary type of cryptocurrency, but uh, from this proposal, it seems like it's not going to be deflationary anymore because at, in the end, if you raise the block reward to three Ether, then you're still my minting a lot. And um, as you know, Ethereum doesn't have a maximum cap. It's, it doesn't have a limit on how much Ether it can be produced. So the only way to become a deflationary was to burn more Ether than is being mined, uh, you know, produced on a daily basis. So with this proposal, it's not really the case anymore. But um, we'll see. Uh, as the Cointelegraph is reporting, this proposal is not yet seeing a, a huge approval by the community. So it may not really be approved and implemented. It cannot be implemented unless it's approved. Another article that I want to bring to your attention, this is by the Decrypt, and uh, they are talking about a different scaling solution called Rollups and uh, how it can actually make Ethereum cheaper to use. Uh, right now, the transaction fees for Ethereum are so high that uh, all of the attention is on how they can actually scale, what can they do to uh, reduce the transaction fees. Ethereum is really suffering uh, from these uh, transaction fees as we saw Cardano and Binance Chain are really taking advantage of this. And right now, both of them, both ADA, the token of Cardano and BNB, the token of Binance Chain, with the launch of Binance Smart Chain, uh, we're seeing huge appreciation in price. They were pumping for quite some time. In fact, if we look at uh, the overall uh, figures, what we can see is that while Ethereum in the last three months is up by 200%, both Cardano and Binance Chain are up by more than 500%. Uh, Cardano is up 574%. This is in the last three months. And... Uh, Binance BNB is up 768% in the last three months. At the same time, Bitcoin is up 189, 190% roughly, and Ethereum is up 200%. So both of these coins, the, the, the and Polkadot, let's not forget Polkadot as well, 590% uh, in the last three months. So these three projects, Polkadot, Cardano, and Binance, really profited from the fact that uh, Ethereum is having these high fees and people are looking for alternatives, especially a Binance chain with the launch of Binance Smart Chain and ADA also with their latest upgrades to their protocol, opening the doors for applications to be built, decentralized applications, you know, entering DeFi, now uh, also entering uh, the NFT market, which I'm talking a lot about NFTs. I hope uh, you don't mind because NFTs is really the trend for this year. Last year, we were talking about DeFi a lot. We, we keep talking about DeFi, but this year, every all eyes are on a NFT and I will be dedicating another video specifically to NFTs again this week to explain more about them, how you can get involved if you want to get involved. In my uh, yesterday's episode, I told you that I will be getting into the NFT game as well. I am releasing my first NFTs possibly ne next week. I already created five uh, digital artworks uh, that are ready for NFTs. I only need to, uh, you know, launch them and everything, but I will be talking about this in another video. So um, back to Ethereum and the different ways that they're trying in order to solve the problem with the high fees. So to quote the article here, one solution is the rollups, so-called because the technology rolls up transactions and fits them into a single block. Doing so frees the network from congestion, making transactions faster and cheaper. And with any luck, they will allow the Ethereum network to keep on growing. This is what the Ethereum creator Vitalik Buterin gushed about to listeners on the Tim Ferriss show when he referred to a powerful scaling solution last week. So um, a quick explanation here on rollups as well. Rollups addresses the scalability problem by processing transactions off 
of the Ethereum blockchain, minimizing congestion on Ethereum by reducing its load. The rollups happen on a side chain, which is periodically updated and tells the main Ethereum blockchain about the transactions that are being processed. This is what's known as a layer two technology. And uh, I've talked about layer two um, protocols. Scale is one of them. There are a few different protocols that are working on layer two solutions off-chain basically solutions uh, into the to helping ethereum's network and there's also um, layer two protocols for bitcoin such as the lightning network uh, that was big news throughout 2017 and 18 but the lightning network is still not uh, fully operational i mean some people are using it and everything but it proves to be quite a difficult thing still for many people so layer two solutions are not easy and actually the article is mentioning the lightning network as i can see here um, but uh, layer two solutions are actually not very easy they're usually quite technical and they are restricted to um, a small portion of the users being able to take advantage of these and often it is actually third parties and a lot of the times people are not very keen on using third parties this episode of Crypto Corner is sponsored by Cobalt Lend, a new DeFi project that brings crypto lending and borrowing to people and small businesses to make the most of your crypto holdings. It's a great way to earn passive income on your crypto via staking rewards or earn interest via their lending incentives. Cobalt Lend was launched last year and has now partnered with Naus and is using their SEO platform in order to build a more sophisticated lending protocol. We've been covering their progress on this channel since their pre-launch and they have achieved a lot in a short space of time. Their token is supported by Uniswap, OneInch and Mooniswap DEXs. They recently added a hot wallet with a CoinSwap engine for swaps between Bitcoin and various Ethereum assets. You can also buy Bitcoin with a credit card and for transactions under $300 you don't have to do KYC. They are in beta development of their Cobalt Atomic Swap, which is a completely separate swapping engine strictly for Ethereum assets, powered by the partners at Total. They added an insurance fund to protect their users' tokens and later this year they're launching a debit card for instant withdrawals with cashback rewards. Making a passive income with Cobalt Land is easy. There are two types of staking they currently offer. You can stake their native CBOT token on their platform and get paid 5% monthly, just like a savings account. Or you can use the proof of credit mining method via the partner NAUS. This way you can stake NAUS tokens and earn their new NCBOT token that will be the primary driving force of the lending platform they are building. The team of Cobalt Land incentivize stakers by paying them additional rewards for staking with them on the NAUS platform by giving out monthly airdrops of their CBOT tokens and even just for registering their NAUS wallet on their platform, where the user can stake NAUS tokens without giving away ownership of their tokens. For more details, go to cobaltland.com and register for free. You can also find the link in the description below. So this is everything for today's episode, guys. I hope it brought you value and uh, it helped you as well. And if it did, share it with someone else who would also benefit from watching it. Also, uh, show your support by leaving a like and a comment below. And don't forget to check out the links in the description where I leave uh, all the links to all the major crypto services such as top exchanges, top hardware wallets, uh, top um, uh, services that I'm personally using for my charting tools and uh, monitoring the markets and everything. So all of this is in the description always check the links and if you use any of these links some of these are referral links this is how you can actually show your support to this channel and also if you're new to the channel hit the subscribe and the notification bell so you know when i'm posting a new video tomorrow i'm coming to you with an update on the trading bots that i'm using madrex i recently uh, did a, a few videos about this so if you are aware or if you are not then make sure that you catch the video tomorrow i will be explaining i will be 
answering a lot of questions from you guys that uh, joined me with these trading bots because they they were quite popular uh, when I made the video and uh, I will give you an update on my progress with them as well so this is coming tomorrow and then after that I will do another video where I will be talking about NFTs and I will be explaining how to get in on the game with NFTs so a lot of great content is coming your ways make sure that you are subscribed and you get these notifications well this is everything i'm signing off and i will see you tomorrow